Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,511. If you're traveling with your car, it's like you have a piece of home with you. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special guest calling in from Chicago, Adam Kern. Adam Kern is a Chicago native who in 2012 purchased his first Porsche after growing up in a lifelong muscle car fan family that had a tendency to lean towards GM cars. Since then, he's joined the board of directors for the PCA Chicago region, along with running the club's autocross program and their social media. In 2017, Adam led efforts to create Checked It Out Chicago, the Porsche Convergence, which is held in downtown Chicago. Checked It Out is a nonprofit that raises money for local charities by bringing Porsche owners and enthusiasts together for a day, cars, food, and music in a very cool urban setting. We'll be back in a minute to talk to Adam, but first, a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars Yeah possible. We'll be right back. Hey, Cars Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy on, easy off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you a Cars Yeah subscriber? If you're not, go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send you my free filler up book. It's a very cool book I created of fuel filler fun, some very cool imagery, and great quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get my weekly email follow-up and my weekly blog. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send it to you right away. Thanks for subscribing. All right, Adam, we are back. I want to welcome you to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? All right, let's do this. All right, all right. No, you're an autocross guy, so you're always buckled up and ready for a fun ride. Before we uh, jump into the questions, though, could you tell maybe our listeners one little thing about Adam that maybe most people don't know about you? I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion Design. No kidding. Back oh my gosh, in the, that's pretty cool. Back in my day, which almost seems like a different lifetime, you know, I've learned to sew dresses and menswear. I've been featured on a few runway shows, made into little uh, magazines here and there. But these days, most people know me as the Porsche driving iron worker. <laughs> so I kind of, that's my trade. I've been in for about 12 years, but you could say I live in two extremes and the guys on the job site, I don't care if they know what I used to do. I'll take it on any day. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you go to school to study fashion design? It's Columbia College in downtown Chicago. There you go. Very cool. Well, you know, that's a, a fun thing about that question. We get to reveal some very interesting things. So you're a very multifaceted guy. You know, I started my first 11 years out of college as a designer. I was a creative director at an advertising agency. And, uh, you know, it's a kind of a different world than what I did when I uh, worked at Grio's Garage. And then now I've been doing this for six years. You know, it's fun to mix life up a little bit, right? It's the way it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, as we continue on your journey, I want to ask you for a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that maybe has been instrumental in forming your life. It's a nice way to get the Tire smoking in your case here on Cars Yeah, being an autocross guy. So, Adam, grab the wheel. Take control. You know, there's a thing that people really like to use a lot, and it's build it and they will come. I know it's pretty corny from Field of Dreams and all that. I've never even watched the movie, 
but I believe wholeheartedly if you just start an event like we did with Checked It Out, you know, if you want to have 200 Porsches and a thousand plus people show up to downtown Chicago and have a great time, we'll simply build it. You know, the key is getting the first event in the books and it'll just snowball from there. You know, Checked It Out was named after our friend Karsten, Karsten Ofka Bauer, that Checked It Out was his Instagram handle. And when we talked about starting this event before he passed away, he just said, I don't care if we have 20, 30 cars show up. Let's just go for it and make it happen. And, you know, that's what we did. We started with 70 cars and maybe 500 spectators. And this year we're anticipating at least 250 cars with a thousand plus people coming like from all over the world, Europe, Canada. Cool. Well, tell our listeners a lot more about it because when you and I were talking in our pre-show check, uh, checklist that I kind of go over with my guests here, I, I mentioned Luftkult, which among yeah. Porsche files is like kind of a bit of a holy grail, maybe not as as grand as Rensport. I mean, that is kind of the holy grail of car, Porsche car experiences, but Luftkult has become its own thing, if you will. So when I learned about what you're doing at Checked It Out Chicago, it, it, it has, has the same feel and same vibe. So if people are going to attend your event, what can they expect to experience? How does the day go? So of course, Luft is our inspiration. They're they're the big dog and all everything that's done. And they are essentially why we started this. So I go back to social media. Karsten was on someone's page talking about how great it would be to do an outlaw, nine eleven outlaw event in Chicago. And at the time I, I didn't really know him well. I I would help out with that. I would volunteer in any way. I only owned uh, water pumpers at the time, but you know, of course, I think air-cooled cars are great, and that was always in the back of my mind. And then when it came to starting this event and just thinking about it, you know, that was the inspiration. And I decided that we need to have every Porsche model. We're still looking to get someone to come out in a Panamera. It hasn't happened yet. Well, one of the dealers did bring a Panamera Sport Turismo. My friend has a Ratty 924S that he's driven all over the country. We want him. And if he's parked next to a Carrera GT, great. You know, we had a, a 4 cam 356 Cabriolet. We want to touch on everything that is Porsche and celebrate yeah. the marquee. Is there a, a big group of Porsche Files, Porsche PCA group there in Chicago or a lot of members? We are, I believe, in the top five. Oh, wow. About, okay. I would figure. You're probably looking at about 3,200 members with the, that's counting the, uh, co-members so the husband and wife etc very very active region we have events every every weekend practically in the summertime well the great thing that i've seen with luft cult is they've been able to somehow and probably because of patrick long and some of the other big names associated with that event uh get a lot of folks now being in la huge that's probably one of the biggest porsche club markets yeah in the country i would imagine and because the weather is always very nice um, that's never a problem. Obviously, mm-hmm. you do your events not in the winter time because Chicago can get a little right. cold, right? Absolutely, yeah, exactly. So uh, I would imagine, you know, like you said, if you build it, they will come. This will take time to generate some speed under its wheels, but it sounds like a fun event. Uh, I wish you were a little closer to me. It'd be a bit of a drive for me from the Pacific Northwest to enjoy the day. But I think that's cool. As you look forward with checked it out, Chicago. What do you see as a future vision a couple of years with this event? What would be your dream vision of, of what this becomes? We just really want to keep doing what we're doing and build on it. We want to continue, you know, to benefit a charity. You know, we change the charities every year. It is um, it is now three days of events. We have an open house at Midwest Performance Cars where everyone, especially the out-of-towners, where we meet for the first time. Then we do our charity reception on the eve, which... Last year, we were very fortunate enough to have your friend and mine, Ray Schaefer, speak to our crowd, which was fabulous. And, you know, we, we just have a little party that night and have silent auction items and everything and raise money for the charity, like I said. And then Saturday morning, we're there at 5.30 in the morning, 6 a.m., and we get to it. The public starts rolling at about 9, and then we're pretty much over by 3 o'clock, but it, it goes fast. And it, having it on a Saturday afternoon really creates a relaxed atmosphere and no one is worrying about going back to work on Monday. You know, we, we have a good time. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, I think it's going to be great. And as you build on this and you start putting different things around it, perhaps you can draw more and more people. It can get bigger and bigger. And uh, 
who knows where this thing can go, but it sounds like a really fun event. Let's take a look at some of the challenges perhaps you've had in your life or your career, or maybe with this event, wherever you want to take us is up to you. But more importantly, how did this big challenge in your life or even a big failure force you to make a change or what was the lesson learned? How did you overcome the situation and where'd you go from there? I lost a spouse. In 2012, I lost my wife, Sally. I mean to laugh, but I'm just sorry. You know, it's just, it, I don't think I'll ever encounter, knock on wood, I don't think I'll ever encounter everything tougher than that. But since that happened, that has really changed things. I find myself more pro- present in the moment. It took me a long time to get that way. Probably, you know, the first year I was pretty lost. But some of the clips, I got back to it. And this path has led me in a different direction. That's when I bought my, my Porsche. I figured I was kind of an owed an indulgence, you know, some, something fun in my life. And um, it, had I not done that, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have had all the friends that I've made from doing these events and being a Porsche Club member or SCCA autocrosser. This has really become my life. So it sent me in that direction, and I'm very thankful for it. And it also, my partner, Brooke, we've been together for quite a while. She, you know, she likes cars. She's she accepts my hobby, no problems. She even drives a yep. manual, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm so sorry and my sincere condolences. I mean, 2012 was a while ago, but it's not something really that you ever get over. You know, I just saw a video today, and it's it's so odd that you called in today and mentioned this, about a woman who had lost her spouse her husband, and how she talks about that you don't ever move on. You don't get over it. It just gets different. And I've had plenty of guests on this show after 1,500 people, uh, many people who've lost spouses and partners in their lives and how they've talked about how that's changed their lives and, and what that means to them. I had one just very recently, Mike Piera, who uh, is a Porsche racer on the show that lost a spouse. And let me ask you this, and, and I don't want to be cliche here at all, but it's a, it's a great lesson for those of us who are blessed with having a spouse. I've been married 35 years for a long time, and you, you take advantage of that sometimes in a way that you just never think about them being gone, of course. But what did that lesson teach you, that very challenging lesson about being in the moment? Because you mentioned that you are now more present and in the moment, that was somehow the gift that came to you from this terrible experience. Is that the key thing that you would like to share with people so that those of us who are fortunate to still be with our spouses need to understand that it might help us be a better person, a better spouse? Yeah, because I think in a certain sense, I was too much concerned about the, the future. You just kind of overlooked the here and now. And my, my key is kind of making today as best as it can be or at least the weekends <laughs> when it comes with the cars sure. and doing yeah. events you know and just the other thing was checked it out too is which i can relate to claudia who's the widow of carson who we named the event after you know carson went was lost his life to cancer as well so there's a, there's a, a lot of synergy there unfortunately yeah exactly well it's a a good thing for all of us to be reminded every day. And at this day and age, with all the kind of chaos going on in the world right now, uh, with the financial markets and the coronavirus and all of this, it, all these things is to remember that every day is, and I know it's a cliche, but it really is, to be in the moment, put the phone down, pay attention to the people around you, talk with them, share with them. And more importantly, like you said, get out and have fun. If you love cars, Get a cool car, go out and have a good time with it. And if you're fortunate to have a, a partner that loves them too, include them in the event. Um, take a take a drive, have, go on a trip, do an autocross, do something you've never done. Get do Route there 66. Life. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, this country is a wonderful place to do road trips. There are so many spectacular things to see in this country. I mean, you could never do it all, uh, but it's, uh, it's cool. I'm a part of the 356 Porsche Club. And, I get their publication, the registry, and there's a story in this month's issue about a guy that drove, gosh, I think he drove from around your area across to California all the way up into Alaska and all the way back. I mean, this massive trip in this little 356 Porsche. Yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy. 
Ah, it's great. Well, listen, let's take a short break, uh, catch our breaths here, say thank you to our sponsors, and we will be right back. Thanks for that story. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today, and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, Adam, we are back, and I would love for you to share a story that instigated your personal passion for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were definitely a car guy? You know, I I always think of myself as always being a car guy. When I was a little kid, my grandma would put uh, Hot Wheels cars on the birthday cake she would bake me. (laughs) Nice. So, But it kind of begins being in my late thirties, getting my first fun car, which was my cabriolet. I also bought a coyote Mustang at the time, which two years later I sold, but whatever. When I started auto crossing and using, well, I owned my first manual, which was my first manual car was indeed that Mustang. And I went in, you know, a few manual Porsches, which are still in my garage right now, but auto crossing as a manual car, getting on a track with DE. I had this aha, aha moment. You know, this was it to me. And I said to myself, where was this all my life? Shifting gears makes everything better. You know, <laughs> you could be in the most, most mundane car, and as long as it has a third pedal, yeah. the world is good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you're engaged in the activity, and that's what makes it really fun. And it's kind of sad to see so many, even high-end marks like Ferrari and, and many models of Porsches take away the manual. Uh, I think their GT3 or GT3 RSs now have manual options back in them, but it just makes the whole experience more fun and better. And your comments about track days, my first time at the track was, uh, well, I did some autocrossing in my Porsches way back when I lived in Southern California, and that was fun. But the first time on a track was with my E36 M3s. And doing that with the BMW club and then going out with other clubs and having track days and lapping days led me to vintage racing. And it was just so much fun. And you learn so much about your car in a very safe environment. You don't have to worry too much. I mean, you still got to remember the throttle goes both ways. And uh, definitely people have balled up cars at tracks, but uh, it's not necessary. You can go out there and drive at your own pace and have fun. And everybody is there to help you very much. Let's talk about that first special car. Is it the Porsche you want to talk about? No. So there is only one car that is 
repeatedly in my dreams, and that is huh? my first car. Okay. I'm sure many it? people can relate to it. It was a 1969 Cutlass S, very plain, 350 two barrel. We got in Arizona. My my mother actually bought it for me, and I was in eighth grade. It sat. Eighth grade? <laughs> yeah, I was very shocked. But it sat in the back of our garage outside for a couple of years until I hit 16, and then unfortunately, really, I only drove it for about a year. Everyone in high school remembers it terrorizing the parking lot. Hit 130 very foolishly on the way on the, you know, the highway with a friend, and there was all kinds of hijinks in that car. As plain as it was, it just looked good, and I would love to have another one of those someday, whether it's a Cutlass or possibly even better, a GTO 68 or 69, of course. Yeah. Well, even the, the Cutlass S, I mean, they, you can get like the 442s. Uh, I think they came in those cars. I mean, they were they're pretty much a muscle car. I mean, they they had a really big haunchy stance to them. If you will, I love the back of those things. They looked really cool. The way the lights kind of came up over the, the back hood or fenders, if you will. And some of those came with some cool stripes on the hood and down the back. So yeah, 69, yeah, the so tail lights were vertical, whereas 68, yeah. they had that horizontal, but pick oh, okay, your flavor, okay. I suppose. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, it's they're cool cars. So that's pretty. Now, what inspired your mom to get a kid your age one of those? I mean, was it a family or friend's car? Where did it come from? Yeah, it was kind of a loose connection, and it was for sale for, I believe, $3,000. It was an Arizona car. And my father at the time had a 67 442 with, you know, 400 and her shifter that was all black. So I suppose in a certain sense, we were copying him, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Oh, that's pretty nice. You got a cool mom. Let's talk about a very uh, a very introspective question for you. I'm going to get into your skull a little bit here. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, what would Adam be and why? Well, I would have to be something that is on the big side, the large personal luxury car, you might say, something vintage, of course. So I'm going to go with my favorite car of the 60s, which is a 1965 Buick Riviera. Hideaway headlights. No other GM car shared that platform, which I think is amazing. And then, of course, you know, I don't know if you ever heard the com uh, the compliment that Pina Farina laid on it, saying, you know, what a great American design that was. Nice. So that's what I would choose to be. Okay, well, you know, definitely a very very cool car, and I've seen some wonderful renditions of that vehicle done in resto mod type version, or even just really clean. Uh, restorations of that car, but maybe some nice little elegant touches to it. There was something about the Riviera that was muscly and strong, but refined and stylish. It was this combination. It, yeah, almost like a Iso Revolta or something like that, where you have the beautiful Italian body and the American muscle underneath. And the Riviera, to me, had a bit of, maybe that's why that great designer made the comment that he did it had a bit of European style to it somehow that was pretty darn cool. So there we go. Adam is a Buick Riviera 65. I like it. Well, we're entering the last lap here, Adam. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give me some quick blips of that Riviera throttle. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits that you think has contributed to your successes in life? Putting people together. You know, I manage so many social media accounts and word of mouth and talking to folks and inviting them to events, I think has made a difference to me. This network that we have with uh, Checked It Out, you know, going to Luft, we just came back from Das Run Treffen and in Miami, uh, El Rodriguez puts on a fabulous event there. It's been amazing. We, we become friends with people from all over the world. It's, and you see them, you know, we see them in Miami, we see them in L.A., we're going to see them in Durham, North Carolina. And a lot of them are going to come here to Chicago and we're going to play a great host. Yeah, it's cool. Well, that's what this car hobby is so phenomenal for is making connections uh, amongst people. It's just absolutely the car industry, the car hobby is unlike any other. And I keep saying this on this show, but it's really true, is that it brings people from all walks together and all of our differences just dissolve away when it comes to being around cars, which is really fantastic. How about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? So first of all, I'm having a rye Manhattan up. Okay. And it's with, <laughs> and it's with Raymond Lowy. 
I'm in my madman style suit and, you know, we both have perfectly groomed mustaches and we're talking about the Avanti that he designed, of course, you know, Air Force One, even the Coke bottle. But what we're really going to talk about is design. And he designed a logo that is one of my favorites. That is a livery on my Cayman that I put on the track. It's the Lucky Strike logo. Uh, I have it on the hood of my car as kind of an homage to my grandpa who smoked Lucky's until he quit cold turkey. But anyway, it's a beautiful graphic. And I've become all about that as being the art director for Checked It Out and working with the various artists and coming up with my own ideas. It's just become my passion. Yeah, he was the guy. And when I studied design in school, I mean, he was somebody I really looked up to. This was back in the late 70s, 80s. And the the things that he did that are just so iconic and are still around today and still of value today. I mean, the guy had an amazing eye. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. I love that. Very cool. How about uh, the best automotive advice anyone's ever given you? Don't buy cars on the internet without seeing them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i I, I've done I did it, that I've done but I, I lucked out yeah I've, I've lucked out too i bought a mv agusta f4 motorcycle that way and uh, my turbo that i have uh, i got lucky with those cars but i've seen a lot of people that are not so lucky the cars show up and you just go is that the same car i can't, I can't be the right. same car yeah i've had one delivered my my 944 was delivered that was a surprise for my partner brooke and we, you know, we drive it around and everything. But then I just got the my first air cooled car, which is a G body. I I got it out of Connecticut. Long story, but it took a while to get it. And I finally told the the owner, I'm like, hey, I'm dri- I'm getting a one way flight. We're doing this. Get ready. Get the car prepared. I drove it home in the middle of winter, 13 hours from there to Chicago. I I got lucky with good weather and. I learned all the quirks of, you know, a G-Body 911 on the way home, you might say. Well, there's nothing like buying a car and driving it home. I did that with a Beck Spider with my son. We picked it up in Long Beach and drove it to almost 1,500 miles back up here. And you really learn a lot about a car spending four days on the road with it. That's for sure. We were lucky. The car did really well. It was built by John Wilhoyt, so he did an excellent oh, job. Got us, got us home safe and sound. But... uh uh, I've heard of many people not having that kind of luck, maybe getting just outside of town before the car breaks down or yeah. you know, in the middle of nowhere. But it's a good way to, to become acquainted with a vehicle for sure. How about a resource? Is there one out there that is a go-to for you that you're really fond of you'd like to share? Yes. So even driving my uh, 86 911 back home, I'm texting Tony and Brian. They're my Wisconsin buddies. They are Octoon Craft on Instagram. They are uh, very big DIYers. They do all their work themselves. Their knowledge is amazing. I could hit them up with any stupid little question I have, and they're right there to answer it. Nice. And we will. Nice. We will all. We will all be together at Luft this year. So be on the lookout for it. So spell that for me, so we get that right. It's Achtung, like like a warning in German. You know, A C H T U N G, and then Craft, one word. Achtung Craft. There you go. Excuse me, Craft with a K. Oh, with a K, RFK. Yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. Great guys. Tune crap. Okay, great. Wonderful. How about a book? Is there a book you've read you think our listeners should crack open and read? Yeah, recently I read, this is not a t-shirt. It's a book by Bobby Hundreds, who a, runs a fashion line. It really covers all of, of a lot of pop culture, a lot of stuff I can relate to. We're in a similar age. I really enjoyed reading it. You know, I... I Pop culture is kind of my main inspiration. It doesn't even it doesn't even matter the era. That's kind of what I live for in a certain sense. Is that the title of the book, Pop Culture? No, the title of the book is This Is Not a T shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> there I, <laughs> I didn't quite understand when you said that, going, What is he talking about? Okay. This is not a T shirt. Interesting. Yeah. I've not heard of that. Yeah, it was a fun little read. It went I went through it really quickly, but yeah. enjoyed it yeah, very I'll much. Have to, I'll have to get my hands on that. Sounds cool. Well, I'll remind our listeners, we can uh, give you access to all these great resources Adam has shared on his very own Cars yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Adam Kern, K-E-R-N, and that page will pop up. In fact, all the past 1,511 guests here all have their own pages. And there's a great resource called Guest Recommended Books, where this book and, gosh, over 1,500 books are listed there with quick, easy clicks to buy from all my past inspiring automotive enthusiasts. All right, we're up to the checkered flag here, Adam. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy. 
I'm going to buy you a cool collector car today. Anything you want, I'm going to park it in your garage there in Chicago. But there are some rules to this game. The first one is you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. I want you to drive it, so pick something you will enjoy. And it's the only collector car you can have, which means you got to get rid of all your others and keep this one. So if you have your car of your dreams, that's cool. That way I don't have to write a check today. But if you don't, what can I buy you? As much as I love classic cars, I have to have something modern, something fast. It has to be fun to drive. And it also has to be what, uh, maybe close to two million, I believe. I don't really price these cars, but that's <laughs> right. Okay, I need some water. <laughs> okay, I better know. What what am I buying? <laughs> well, I want a roof C T R three. <laughs> oh, okay. I I can do that. Yeah, I love that. You know, I've had the pleasure of visiting Aloui Roof twice in Pfaffenhausen, uh, Germany there. First time I went, he let me drive a yellow bird. Not before having his test driver take me for a drive through the countryside there in Germany and scaring the AT double hockey sticks out of me. That was for you, Chris. <laughs> I've got a listener who uh, likes me to keep my language clean. The GTR3. Oh my gosh. CTR3. Well, you know, uh, GTR3. Yeah, GTR3. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, well, what those cars that Al we built are, are just insane. Very cool. I got to talk with him for a while back at the jet party during car week in Monterey. Um, he's so nice. He sends me a Christmas card every year. And I was wow. first at his shop in 1996. He still sends me a Christmas card every year. He and his lovely wife. It's so nice of him. Uh, but you picked a really sweet ride. I mean, when you think about cars nowadays, like the Singer or the Outlaws that John Wilhoy to Rod Emery build or the RSR group, I mean, these people that build these reproduction uh, cars of things. I mean, you look at the roof was really the guy that started it all, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he's been around forever. And for you listeners, if you didn't hear uh, when Aloy Roof was on my show, you got to listen to the story because there's a fascinating thing that I never knew about he and his father and how the Roof Motor Car Company started, uh, which is just fascinating. I won't give, a, give it away here, but go back and listen to his story. It's on the Cars yeah website. Now, so that I get it right, when I give uh, Mr. Roof a call, what color do you want yours in? You know what? One in oak green metallic seems to stick in my stick out in my mind. I can't think of where I've seen it, but you know that seems pretty good to me. I'll take it. You know, I think um, Pete Stout of Triple Zero Magazine, his latest acquisition, newer Porsche, is oak green metallic. I believe he can correct me on this, but it, it's a beautiful color. It's one of those yeah, colors I think you're that right, I think nine nine one point two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw that car during Car Week. Uh, I think I saw it at. Um, Bruce Canapa's shop, actually, when he did his rare colors event of Porsches and unique paint-to-sample colors. But it's a beautiful color. And you know that car would look really cool with – you're starting to see it come back now, gold wheels. Oh, yeah. Very popular in the 80s. I had a I had a metallic oak green Scirocco that I bought new in 1979. Ah. Uh, promptly put BBS basket weave gold rims on it. Of course, it was, you know, 80, so – had to do that. I think that would look pretty cool. BBS RSs, that's what I have on yeah. my 86 now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Again, yeah, Scarnet, the cool. Garnet red metallic, so the dark red and the gold to yeah. really set it off. Yeah. I think that would look really cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll get to work on that for you. Uh, it may take me a little while to save up that two plus million bucks, but uh, I know where to get the car. So just hang tight. I'll get to work. Uh, I got a few cars to buy before yours, but don't worry. We'll get to it. Adam, you've taken me on a fun ride today, buddy. This has been really great. I want to thank you for sharing your life. And I want to have you offer one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the Chicago sunset in that roof, GTR3. I have, I have two I would like to pose, and they're, they're pretty much related. First one, choose life. You know, live in the moment. Create your own experiences. Get out there and do your thing. And the other one uh, I'm very fond of, my friend Chris Cluel, and his whole, speaking of Pete Stout, and his, uh, Chris wrote a piece for Triple Zero magazine called Take the Car. And I believe very much in that. I think if you're dry, if you're traveling with your car, it's like you have a piece of home with you. It's just the greatest thing. And on the flip side of that, nothing is worse than being at a car event when your car is not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. 
I know. It's, uh, yeah, been there, done that. And you just kind of wish you had it with you. It's like bringing a buddy along to participate in that. I remember that story. Uh, for those of you listeners who aren't familiar, uh, check out triple zero 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 dot com, Pete Stout's publication. Um, it comes out quarterly. It's a little pricey, but you know what? Do what I did. Cancel some of the other magazines you don't read anymore and save up and subscribe to this. If you love Porsches, even if you're not a big Porsche fan, but you love cars, this is not a normal magazine. It's like getting a book every three months, and you won't let these things go. They will be part of your library. The in-depth stories are absolutely fascinating. I've learned so much reading that, so a little shout out to Pete and Triple Zero Magazine. Check yeah, I've been out. a subscriber. I've been a subscriber since the beginning, and it's just me too. It's stunning. The yeah, work in there is cool. amazing. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job. What's the best way for people to learn b- more about you, Adam, and follow along with what you're doing? Well, check it out on the socials. It's at Checked It Out Chicago on the web. It's Checked It Out dot CC. It's our new website and development. Also, to follow me and all my car stuff with my brand, Low and Garage lowandgarage.com and at Low and Garage Chicago on Facebook and Instagram as well. There you go. I'll make sure I put links to all those on Adam's show notes page so you can follow along with what he is doing if you're going to be in the Chicago area. When does your next event take place? So we haven't announced it officially or at least publicly, but September 12th. So we're go. going to do Checked It Out 2020 on 912. 912. I like it. Very cool. Well, again, if you're going to be in the Chicago area or make a special trip, jump in your Porsche, your car, whatever you've got, they'll welcome you. You don't have to draw, roll up in a Porsche. Just show up and have fun and enjoy a special day with car guys and car gals. Uh, it's going to be fun. Again, you can find everything on Adam's show notes page here on the Cars yeah website. Adam, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your life's experiences with me and our listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Cars Yeah listeners, this is Mark Green. If you love the Cars Yeah podcast, I have something new for you. I've teamed up with Keith Martin, a collector car market expert and the editor of Sports Car Market Magazine to create the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast. Buy, Sell, Hold is the essence of collecting. Together, we take you on an educational ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so you know when to buy, sell, hold. We talk with seasoned experts, who buy, sell, and hold investment vehicles, and they'll share their insider secrets on how they make their buying decisions when it comes to making these important investments. You'll find the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast on the Cars yeah! website, on the Sports Car Market website, and if you're a podcast app subscriber to Cars yeah! Buy, Sell, Hold will come right to your mobile device, just like the Cars yeah! podcast, automatically. Join Keith Martin and me on a great new venture on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.